Hello and welcome to another Rightly Witterings and today we have a new box to look at. wonder what's inside this. Let's have a look. So what have we here? First of all a nice little container with a description of what the pen is, gives you the history of it and so on, a cleaning polishing cloth and instruction manual. And then we have another box inside the box. Oh that's nice. So here's a box from inside the box. And inside that certificate of authenticity, another instruction manual I think, and then oh a box. So that's the third box in a box. Hey ho. With a plastic bag. Let's have a look at these first. So this is a sort of history of the Shakespeare pen, how it was designed, photo of Shakespeare's house, bit of a timeline, all good stuff, we like this, and then a photo of the pen in silver. This isn't in silver, I don't think. The Shakespeare pen, certificate of authenticity, what more can you ask for? So let's have a look. So here's the third box in a box. <laughs> but this one's, oh, I've got to be careful with this, I don't want to break it. Yep, very tight fit. Ah, gotcha, right. And look at that! Cool. So here we have a lovely gold vermeil, or vermeil, I don't know exactly how it's pronounced, guilloche fountain pen. Why have I got this? Well, I hit 5,000 subscribers this week, so thanks to you lot, I thought, isn't it only sensible that I should have a gorgeous gold pen? Yeah, I'm not keeping it, it's going back to Conway Stewart shortly, but never mind. What is it? Right, this is the Shakespeare. As you can see, it's got this wonderful machined engraving that is apparently called silk in the trade. And the reason for that is that Shakespeare himself was the son of a silk trader, as I understand it. So looking at the pen, plain band, nothing written on it at all. Plain band at the top of the cap. We've got plain at the bottom, apart from these, which are the SA marks. Clip. Good and strong, not that you'd ever want to hold this in your pocket because it might get scratched. Got a little onyx decorative piece there, and that is purely because apparently that's um, the stone that's associated with thinking creativity and all that sort of good old stuff. On the top, gorgeous engraving of Shakespeare's head. That's really nice, I like that, good touch. Much better, it has to be said, than the engraving on the Drake, which is nice but not as good and then at the bottom it's also got engraved one out of 400 so this is a beautiful piece of collectible penware because there's only going to be 400 made now i was comparing this originally with my conway stewart drake because that too has guilloche patterning on it and it is solid silver and I thought solid silver compared to gold that'd be nice but you've got to bear in mind it's felt that this type of pen at what is it 85 grams is a bit too heavy for the average user this is a much much lighter pen it's only 47 grams so I was thinking hmm, how do other pens compare and I came up with my Peerless 125 which is Similar, it's not the same pattern, but it's got this lovely light patterning on it. And being a cross, it has a cross dot on the top, but in here it's got a Swarovski crystal, which is utterly pointless. You can't see the damn thing at all because it's recessed. Never mind, got a plain bottom down there. But the reason why I thought these two are comparable is they're both gold plate. So 
this, the Shakespeare, is gold plate straight onto solid silver. This, I don't know what it's on actually, but if I look at these two, not the Drake, the Drake is 85 grams, these are 48 grams and 47 grams. Take the cap off and the Drake is still 42 grams, so the Drake without its cap is roughly the same weight as either of these two. This without the cap is 26 grams and the Shakespeare without the cap is 20 grams. So these two are more comparable in terms of weight and looks and size I think it's fair to say. So what's what else have we got going on here? Take the cap off don't even think about posting it, it would be hugely ungainly, it would be utterly impractical. Inside there is... Doo -doo 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 -doo. might take a while this, because it takes a long time, there we go. Standard cartridge converter, so you can take international cartridges or you can put in the converter. And it has a gorgeous flag nib. I really do love these nibs. They are just amazing to write with. It writes, as you would expect, superbly well. Got. I've been playing with this for quite some days because I thought I deserved it. Why not indeed? And it's been writing absolutely wonderfully for me. Using Prussian blue works very well in particular with it. I'm not going to go through all of my writing with you because some of it's private. So there. Um, I think it's got a lovely feel. It's got an excellent balance to it. Really does feel nice in the hand. It's not too heavy so you can go for extended writing with it. Um, it's not too long, certainly can't cap it off post it. It is a very, I said here, a very elegant, comfortable, but light pen to use. And being lighter, it makes it easier in the hand for extended periods, I'd think. Would I personally prefer the cross? or the Shakespeare. Now I am English, I like English styling and for me, although I absolutely love this cross because when it's in the hand that shape tapering down on both ends is very very comfortable to use. I do like the looks of this with the gold. I hate the look of that. I think that lid, that cap, is the gobbiest, most revolting thing I've seen on any pen ever. This is a bit over the top, but it feels better in the hand, I think, because the section here is a little bit thinner. It's a little bit narrower, and it makes it more comfortable to right wing with. So, for my money, out of these two, I would sell my Peerless 125 and I would keep the Shakespeare. However, then it comes down to which of these two pens, my Drake or the Shakespeare, would I keep? And there it's very, very straightforward, I'm afraid. There is no way I would give up my Drake. Not because of the overall looks, I don't think, but because I really love that weight. It works so much better for me. It just sits in your hand and the nib glides over paper. It is a stunningly good pen to use. Not to say this isn't a perfectly good pen, but I suppose it's the reaction I have to the silver. I've always preferred silver to gold. The size and the weight of it and also the sentimental value that's associated with it for me. So for me it would certainly be the Drake still. But 
that really is a gorgeous item to play with. So thanks to Bespoke Pens for sending me a copy of their Shakespeare. Shakespeare number one, no less. And for letting me play with that for a few days. It's been an absolute pleasure to use. So there you have it. Three marvellous pens, two gold plates, one solid silver. If you get a chance to experience one of these, I can recommend them. Really nice feel in the hand, gorgeous, gorgeous nib. It just works faultlessly. It's really, really nice to play with. But again, if you see a Drake, that's worth having a look at too. For a collector, I can easily imagine why the Shakespeare would become a very popular pen. Especially if you're going to use it as well, because this is a usable pen, which makes a nice change compared to some, doesn't it? Thanks a lot for watching. If you're interested in this and you want to support the website, please go down to the bottom where there's a Patreon link. Apart from that, put your comments in down the bottom because I will add, I will add my own comments to them. I reply generally within two days. And then if you like the channel a lot, then hit the subscribe button, ding the bell so you get noted notified every time there's a new video coming through and share it and like it and all those good things and then I can come back next week too. Thanks a lot for watching and I'll speak to you soon. Take care.